Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. Want to go ahead and get to a little bit of late breaking news here on a Sunday in June. But the new cycle doesn't stop. And I'll tell you this, the talent acquisition in college hoops, it never really stops because on Sunday, we talked about this a few days ago, but Will Riley, five-star wing, a member of the class of 2025 on Sunday was set to make his college announcement. Down to five options, Alabama, Kentucky, Illinois, Arizona in the college ranks. And then, oh, by the way, the NBL overseas. Well, just moments ago, Will Riley did officially make his announcement and drum roll, please. Will Riley headed to the University of Illinois to play for Brad Underwood. But there's also a twist. As we also discussed, he announced that in addition to committing to Illinois, Will Riley is set to reclassify and roll in play in college basketball this year. So, how about Illinois with the late June edition of a five star as Will Riley? Five-star wing, class of 2025. He is now part of the class of 2024, headed to Illinois. And let me just say this. Illinois has one of the most fascinating, talented, deep rosters in the Big Ten. And I think they are absolutely right back in the conversation as best team in this conference going into 2024, 2025. So let's go ahead and break it all down. First of all, uh, first of all, I, I think it's worth noting, like, listen, I, we're not tooting our own horns here, but while this is huge for Illinois, I don't think it's shocking or surprising in any way, shape, or form for the Illini. First of all, in terms of the reclassification element of it, this is something that's been on the table, I think, for really months now. I mean, I think I first remember reading about the possibility of this kid joining the class of 2024 back in uh, whatever it would have been, February, March, maybe January. I can't remember the exact date, but this is. It, there's been talk of him reclassifying for a while. As we said earlier in the week when we previewed this decision, ultimately, there just aren't that many examples of guys that basically uh, uh, the, the reclassification rumors begin and they end up staying in the same class. I mean, you could go through Marvin Bagley a few years ago. You know, you get you hear a little buzz. He ends up reclassifying Cooper flag. Same thing a few months back or about a year ago when he announced that he was reclassifying going to Duke. And so the reclassification isn't, isn't a surprise, and ultimately, neither is the decision to go to Illinois. Again, we talked about it earlier in the week, but when you really broke down the options, especially the options for 2024, Illinois seemed to be the place that at least at the college level made the most sense. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I fully understand the nuance of the NBL and the New Zealand breakers and what it would mean to go overseas. But from the college perspective, listen, Alabama is completely full for 2024. So we knew they weren't really going to be an option. And bluntly, they're pretty deep at the position that he plays on the wing. They got scores. They got experience. They got depth. They got Jaron Stevenson. They got guys coming back. So it was never going to be Alabama if it was 2024. Kentucky, I think they feel good with where they are on the wing as well. Jackson Robinson, fifth-year senior. Kobe Brea, fifth-year senior. You know, Andrew Carr is more of a four than a three, but a fifth-year senior who averaged 14 a game at Wake Forest. There was never going to be a natural spot for Will Riley, even as the the, the 13th scholarship guy. Uh, I don't want to say it would have been a struggle to get on the floor, but, like, it, it wasn't whatever. And then finally, of course, Arizona. I never really thought they were a factor. So, so But there was a spot at Illinois, and that's what I want to break down because ultimately I really like this kid's talent but I really also like where he fits and how he fits with the pieces that Brad Underwood has brought in this offseason. So first of all, in terms of Will Riley, I mean, I probably should have gotten to this off the top. This kid is crazy talented. Six foot eight. Can really do everything that you want at that position. You know, I, I, the term modern wing, modern guard, modern big guy, it sometimes gets overstated, but I do think it's probably pretty applicable here. Can handle the ball can shoot from three, can put the ball on the floor, pump fake, drive, go. Um, you know, like I said, not, not a traditional ball handler, but can handle the ball uh, pretty good at creating for others, passing for others. Now, listen, he was just playing against high school kids. It's going to be a step up into the Big Ten, all that good stuff. 
But at the same time, it, the, the talent is so obviously there. The kid is oozing with potential. And now he comes to what I believe is going to be a really fascinating, really fun, really exciting Illinois team in 2024-2025. First off, credit Brad Underwood and his staff for just a complete overhaul. This team makes the Elite Eight. Coleman Hawkins enters the portal in the draft. He says, basically, if I come back to college, I'm not coming back. So we know he's gone. Taron Shannon Jr. is gone. Um, uh, uh, Marcus Damask is gone. And so it's a complete rebuild. But I think that Illinois really did about as good as anybody this offseason at reloading this roster. You look at some of the pieces. Kylan Boswell was at Arizona. Didn't go perfect. But listen, kid averaged nine and a half points and three and a half boards in the Pac-12 in what really should have been his freshman year. Because remember, he was another kid that reclassified and got to college a year early. So nine and a half, three and a half as a 18 year old in the Pac-12 is pretty good. He's going back to the Big Ten. I think he's going to have success there. Uh, like some of the pieces around him on the perimeter, Jake Davis, three point shooter from Mercer, uh, the kid from Evansville. I'm going to butcher the name. Illinois fans, forgive me, but Ben Humrichaus, I believe, is how you pronounce the name but 14 and a half points per game at Evansville, 41% three-point shooter. This kid started his career at the NAI level, goes up to the mid-major level, is awesome there, and I think is going to be very productive for Illinois next season. You add Trey White, a kid that I, for some reason it feels like he has just fallen completely off the radar, but was really good two years ago at USC as a true freshman struggled a little bit at Louisville this past season, but listen, we know that Louisville was a dumpster fire. I think he brings that toughness, that physicality, uh, that want to, that you need in the Big Ten. A little bit undersized, but he's tough as nails. He had a couple other pieces. Kerry Booth, obviously coming over from Notre Dame. His father's a, a Calvin Booth who played in college, played in the pros, is with the Denver Nuggets now. And oh, by the way, a couple other interesting young guys, including... Tomislav Ivicic, who of course is the brother of Big Z Zvonavir Ivicic, who played at Kentucky and is now at Arkansas. And so when I look at the addition of Will Riley, first of all, in the in the smaller picture of 2024-2025, I think Illinois is right there in the Big Ten. Now, Purdue, I know by the way, I was like number one Purdue critic this season, but I like the pieces that are coming back. They played for a national championship. They lose Zach Eady, but they still have obviously Fletcher Lawyer. They still have Braden Smith coming back. They have the two big guys, Daniel Jacobson, who dominated for Team USA this summer, Will Berg, who's a seven foot two kid in his own right. So I think Purdue is right there. Indiana, we did our offseason preview or offseason recap of Indiana just the other day. And listen, I know Mike Woodson's got to prove it, but my goodness, does he have a loaded roster with Umar Balo, with uh with, with Cannon Carlisle, with some of the returnees, Trey Galloway, McKenzie, and Baco, whatever. So I like those two. Worth noting, by the way, like some of the additions to the Big Ten, Eric Musselman has, in my opinion, a top 25 or so roster at USC. UCLA, Big Mick Energy, Mick, Mick Cronin, I mean, really just went to bat this offseason, adding a bunch of high-level transfers. Sky Clark, another Louisville kid. Um, you know, Eric Daly from Oklahoma State, on and on, and, and, and some real talent there to go with some of the returnees. So it's not to say like Illinois is going to run away with this, but I think they're in the conversation with all the additions. Will Riley, I think, fits in perfectly as kind of that slasher, can hit threes, can step out, but kind of complements some of the other guys that they have on this roster. But there's one other thing that I think is worth noting really quick before we get out of here because it is a Sunday in June, and that's that you know I do think there is something to be said about the fact that like Brad Underwood has now, to his credit, and I know externally, internally, whatever, there was the push, hey, you got to get past the first weekend, you got to make a deep tournament run. But this guy has really now, in my opinion, built something sustainable at Illinois. Started with the Io DeSumo, Kofi Coburn crew, that transitions to the Coleman Hawkins, Terrence Shannon Jr. crew that made an Elite Eight this year. And now I think kids are starting to see Illinois the same way that we all who grew up and, and watched college basketball in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, see Illinois. Elite program, everything that you need to succeed at the highest levels there. You're playing in the Big Ten, incredible fan base, incredible arena, basketball school, basketball state. 
I'll be honest, Illinois is one of the, the arenas that I have never been to, the, the State Farm Arena down there in Champaign, one of the arenas I have never been to. Every time I watch a game there, I'm like, darn it, I got to get down to a game there. So I just bring it up to say, you know, I think Brad Underwood's done an incredible job, multiple, you know, reiterations of this program. Like I said, recruiting the high school ranks with Io DeSumo and Kofi Coburn, recruiting the portal ranks with Terrence Shannon Jr., now reloading this team uh, after Terrence Shannon Jr. and Coleman Hawkins leave. So I'm really excited to watch this team, but credit to Brad Underwood. Five-star wing, Will Riley, is a fish, officially a member of the Illinois Fighting Illini. And I think this team is as good as any in the Big Ten going into 2024-25. If you enjoyed this video, do me a quick favor. Make sure to subscribe to the Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. New clips, new videos going up every single day. Also, make sure you're following on social media at Aaron underscore Torres on Twitter, at Aaron Torres Pod on Instagram.